I'm Katrina Jimerson and I, I teach AP three-dimensional art and AP drawing and there's also AP design, um, 2D design that's also represented here. Um, and I'll just read this description because it pretty much captures what AP drawing is um, and all the AP classes. They're the most advanced levels at Woodstock in our curriculum. Uh, the framework of the class focuses on concepts and skills emphasized within college art and design foundation courses. Uh, the intent is to help students become inquisitive, thoughtful artists and be able to articulate information about their work. And then what you're seeing here mostly is their sustained investigations. So the students focused on an in-depth inquiry-based art and design making question basically um, which is a skillful synthesis of like materials processes and ideas and then had to articulate um, information about their work so they formulated questions to guide their work through the year um, ba mostly based on their own experiences and passions and interests the class develops higher level thinking a broad level of technical skills and a range of mediums and styles, art criticism, art history, and aesthetics. Hello, I'm Charlotte Noonan. Um, I'm a student senior at Woodstock. How can art reveal the complexities and emotions of getting older and leaving childhood behind? In a, tr in a transitional period in my life, the idea of deciding my future and abandoning years of my life is quite terrifying. With a focus surrounding the transition from childhood to adulthood, my work explores a visual representation of the connection to my childhood. Topics of embracing, longing, anxiety, and fear are presented in my work as I struggle to accept the responsibilities and realities of becoming an adult. This project was very important to me. It allowed me to understand and accept my emotions towards college and the future. I not only got to explore concepts of creating emotion through art, but I also got to strengthen my artistic skill and focus on realistic surrealism. Art has always been an outlet for me, so to be able to share how my work has helped me is an amazing opportunity. Uh, I'm Clara Shortle. Um, the majority of my work is in the realm of digital photography. I create with mixed media as well, and I paint on occasion. Uh, this year I took advanced digital photography, which is where I work to create the images that are in the show. Um, after it, taking photos on my Nikon D3500 DSLR camera, I use both Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop to edit them. Um, I prefer to use only Lightroom if possible. I only use Photoshop when there are imperfections that are unable to be cropped out and need to be removed manually. I feel photography allows me to explore the exist existent world creatively in a way I don't feel when I paint or draw. I can take something common or otherwise mundane and bring out the visual intricacies and pigmentations. Um, for me, photography is about bringing out the beauty of life and its objects. Um, so in February, I took a trip to Guadalajara, Mexico with my parents. And while we were there, we toured some museums and some of the government buildings. And I got to learn a lot about the history of Mexico from tour guides and like natives there. Um, and it just, the resilience in that community really fascinated me. Um, so when I came back, uh, I was participating in the congressional art competition. And one of our themes, our themes were resilience and community. And I really saw that in the street art that I saw when I was in Guadalajara. Um, so I had all these images of the street art from my trip and I, I edited them and then I combined them with some important things in Mexico's history and images.
I decided to make a three-piece sake set. Um, so Japanese rice wine. Um, I made the bottle and the typical cup that it would be poured into and drunk from. And then this is the more sort of ceremonial type, uh, more un uncommonly used cup. Yeah, they were they were all made on the wheel. I wanted process I've been trying to work on is burnishing. I would throw them on the wheel and then let them get uh, bone dry and sand them and just kind of go up in grit until it was as smooth as I could get it. And then I would burnish it with a stone in water. Uh, my name is Delia Morgan and I am an AP art student at Woodstock Union High School. For my sustained investigation, I explored the topic, how can I represent my personal connection to Vermont and its rural agricultural lifestyle through art? I have lived in Woodstock my entire life, and growing up, my grandparents raised beef cattle, so I was exposed to agriculture very early on. I am the president of the Heartland Cattle Club, a dairy 4-H club at Cedar Mountain Farm in Heartland, and I have been milking cows at the farm since I was 14. I have been riding horses since I was 8, and I have had my own horse since I started high school. Because of these things, agriculture is an essential part of my identity. And for this investigation, I wanted to explore my connection to the animals, landscapes, and people of my beautiful home state. Many of the pieces here are directly from photos I have taken or that were taken of me on the farm with the animals. Um, I'm Cameron Youngling. Um, and, uh, okay, so um, my main focus this year um, was my sustained investigation surrounding the central question, uh, how can I convey the tone, lyrics, and message of a song visually? Um, over the course of the year, and by that I mean the week before my portfolio was due, um, I discovered that I have uh, something called auditory to visual synesthesia. Um, and synesthesia is when your brain links sensory information from one sense to another sense. So it can show up in uh, people as like tasting different colors, or in my case, it's seeing things when I listen to sounds, especially music. Um, and I thought this was normal for everyone, but apparently I was wrong. Um, these uh, typically show up for me as like vague ideas, like a color, a light source, or maybe like a setting or a person, but sometimes um, the music gives me a really clear picture, and that's what the majority of my paintings are. Um, and um, I asked that to experience, the, in, experience these pieces fully. Um, you can like scan the QR code next to them um, and listen to the song as you look at it, um, if you're able to. Um, and you don't really need to listen to the full song, just part, because you can hear lyrics that are referenced in the painting and like the general vibe that I was going for. Like music has always been like a very visual thing for me, right? Um, and a lot of the times I find it hard to like verbally explain what I'm seeing. And so to the best of my artistic ability, um, I tried to convey what I was seeing in my mind to other people by making it in the form of art. Um, because it can be hard to describe the vividness in which I see it. So, okay. Let me actually go with this one, because this is probably my favorite one that I did this year. Um, so it's based on the song uh, You're Gonna Go Far by Noah Kahn. Um, and uh, he's one of my favorite artists. And it's, um, uh, so I have the um, piece uh, here that's the kind of central focus. And that's because the um, one of the lyrics that is in the song is, um, the college kids are getting so young, ain't they? They're correcting all the grammar on the spray paint. So this was the first thing that I kind of thought of. Um, and uh, this is one of my old friends um, and uh, her mother. And I decided to base it off of um, someone going away for college. Um, and so I have a lot of different spray paint around that references different parts of the song. And uh, yeah, this is with uh, watercolor and gouache, which is one of my favorite mediums to work with. I'm Kiara Nestler. I'm, a, I'm actually a junior, uh, but I was put into AP art just because I've done, I'd done advanced art the year prior, so they thought I was ready for it. 
I looked at several examples of art, artist statements and they mostly have a personal or emotional meaning behind them. I don't really have that. Honestly, I just wanted to sculpt some animals and I <laughs> had the urge to make, you know, art. Um, it is kind of a therapeutic process for me, but it's not like, it doesn't have a really deep meaning. Uh, I love making art, especially sculpting. I want people to see my art and think about how wild and different each animal is. Nature is a beautiful thing that we need to appreciate more. And throughout my art, I have developed my style and more of an understanding of how to use certain mediums. I mostly sculpt in clay, which gives me the most malleability to form and com the complex structures of an animal. While I sculpted each of my pieces, I realized how much I like animals and their similarities and differences. And a lot of the main shapes of animals are fairly similar, which I found really interesting because while I was sculpting, I just, I learned a lot about like the anatomy of animals. Um, but the little details and textures gave me a really nice challenge. Um, and I don't want this to be too long as I'd personally rather be looking at art than reading a statement. I get bored reading these and only read the first couple sentences typically, just, I don't know, I'd rather be looking at the art, so, yeah. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Logan Knox. I am a senior at Woodstock Union High School, and I have my art up for show at Artistry tonight. My artistic journey revolves around the deep connection between people and food, inspired by the culinary masters in my life. With mediums ranging from watercolor to oil to and gouache, I've embarked on a quest to capture the essence of these relationships. From cozy moments cooking with my mom in oils to vibrant chalk sketches of diverse dining scenes, each stroke on the canvas represents a cherished, cherished memory or emotion. Through experimentation and printing, I've expanded my artistic experience, discovering new dimensions of expression. My art is a testament to the joy and nostalgia found in food, inviting viewers to savor the beauty of culinary experiences through my creative lens. I am Lindsay Bacon. I'm a senior in high school. Growing up, I loved fairy tales and the world they created. So when I decided my sustained investigation, I centered it around fairy tales. My question is, how can I represent what is captivating and magical about fairy tales through settings, characters, and color? I started by looking through old fairy tales like The Six Swans, Snow White and Rose Red, The Golden Bird, The Prince and the Dragon, and The Twelve Dancing Princesses. In all my works, I thought thoroughly on setting and composition. The placement of characters, trees, and hills are always important. In my Golden Bird workpiece, the onlooker's eye is meant to travel around in a circle through the art. The large moon branches of the tree and feathers of the bird's tail were all curved around the center. Composition was difficult in my Snow White and Rose Red workpiece because both girls each have a tree that curtains each side of the edge of the canvas, like a veil being pulled before, back before a show. It made sense to have the girls apart standing in front of their trees, but I thought they should be together, holding hands to symbolize their closeness as sisters. I experimented with the idea in my sketchbook and decided to go with holding the hands off to the side. In the Twelve Dancing Princesses art piece, the small orbs of light direct the path the eye is supposed to follow. Mm -hmm.